Have you ever been frustrated because you made a video and you put so much energy into it, but it just didn't get the views that it deserved? I know that I have. And in this video, I'm actually going to be talking about how to revive dead videos, a video that is maybe plateaued. It deserves more views. How do you actually trigger it in the algorithm and actually revive that video so that it can start getting views 24-7, 365? We're going to talk about the, that in this video. And this is actually one of the most powerful YouTube strategies that nobody is talking about. And I've actually never shared this information before. And here's what we're going to cover. This is a video that wasn't doing very well. As you can see now, it's a year old and it's got 68,000 views, but in my opinion, it deserved a lot more views than it got. And you can actually see that here, that the typical performance on the channel is this gray area in YouTube analytics. And the video was kind of just doing average, right? It was kind of slightly growing, but it was sort of flatlined. But then what happened was there was an inflection point. Do you see that? there's a dramatic uptick in views that blue line starts to go up and then this video rose above typical performance so how do you do that that's what you're going to learn and this video is all about how to revive dead videos and trigger massive views but if you're new here my name is sean cannell this is the coffee with cannell show if you're fired up hit the like button and uh, we're going to get into it today after about 15 minutes of training. We're then going to cover your questions and so much more. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Coffee with Cannell. I'm Sean Cannell, and let's get into the content today. How do you revive dead videos and trigger massive views? Today's Coffee with Cannell is brought to you by winthistech.com. If you have not heard, we are giving away a Sony ZV-E10 brand new camera. We're giving away a lighting kit, a microphone, an SD card, a tripod, everything you need to create content. And all you have to do to enter is go to winthistech.com, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, but how do I send significant traffic to a video that is plateaued? You know, if you have a video, and let me know in the comments, do you actually have a video you've poured energy into, and you're proud of it, but you just feel like it hasn't gotten the views that it deserved. If you want to send views, AKA traffic to an older video, how could you do that? Well, you could do a Facebook post. That's not gonna work very good though because on Facebook, right, um, Facebook doesn't like YouTube. That's why when you post a YouTube link on Facebook, it doesn't get much organic reach at all because Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, doesn't want anyone to leave the metaverse and go to the YouTube verse, right? You could try to post on Instagram. Very difficult to move people from a social media platform to another social media platform. What are you gonna do? Link in the bio, maybe the clickable link in your stories. And sure, one to 2%, if you're an absolute social media legend, maybe 5% is gonna go over to YouTube, but it's not very effective. Now, you could send a tweet out. Not a bad idea, but it's probably not gonna actually revive your video. You could do a collab. This would be amazing. What if you could collab with a big YouTuber in your space that has a similar niche, and they could actually, at the end, link to one of your videos? That would be pretty powerful, but how do you get a collab? What if you don't know anyone? That's very difficult. It takes coordination. You got to deal with somebody else's schedule, somebody else's personality. And then one of the best things you could do is you could do a YouTube community tab post because at least it's on the YouTube community tab, whether you do your own community tab or actually if you got a shout out on somebody else's community tab. But the problem is none of these methods are really going to revive your dead video. And so this is the most powerful way we've discovered at Think Media. And I was telling you this story about this video that wasn't doing very well. And here's how we revived it. Here's the strategy. Send traffic, aka views, to your dead video with a new video. And I'm going to show you how. So I created a new video on a popular topic in my niche. You know, I'm on a mission to help 10,000 purpose-driven people create a full-time living doing what they love with YouTube and online video while making a difference in the world. And so one of the biggest questions that people 
growing a YouTube channel want to know is how to get views on YouTube. And so the question you should ask is what is a popular topic in your niche? A wider reaching topic. Does it have wide appeal, more mass appeal? Not that you want to step outside of videos that will attract your ideal audience, but does the video have more of a wider appeal? And then I said, how can I make this video really pop? What does that mean? How can I spend more time preparing? How can I spend more time editing? How can I be more intentional with my title and my thumbnail? And sure enough, this video performed incredibly well. So step one is create a new banger video, right? And you just want to do your best. There's really nothing to lose here because anytime you create a great video and put extra energy into it, you're giving that video the best chance of succeeding on its own merits. But here's the key. Secondly, you want to weave in a call to action to the quote unquote dead video. And so in this video about how to get views, I mentioned a bunch of tips. And one of the tips that I mentioned was you could add music to your videos. By adding music, it creates emotion, it creates a feeling, it creates energy. So consider adding music to one of your videos. It was actually one of the seven tips I shared in this video. And if you actually... I highly recommend researching some of these videos because you can see exactly what I said and exactly how the video was edited. We'll summarize the references in the YouTube description below as well as other show notes. So take advantage of those. But ultimately, uh, you can see here partway into the video, I'm now sharing the fifth tip and I'm mentioning music. And the final step is you want to link to the dead video with end cards. And so as I'm sharing music, I say, and listen, um, you know, one of the big mistakes you can make with music is you use music that has is copywritten. It's going to get your video flagged. You're going to lose to monetization. And so actually, if you want to learn where to get royalty free music, that's not going to give you copyright strikes. We have a video on that. Click or tap the screen to watch it. And then we utilize the end card to send traffic to the video. But you might be asking. But Sean, all good in theory. How do you know this works? How can you prove this works? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to show you. And so to recap the steps, though, step one is what is one of your best older videos that has plateaued or has stopped getting views? Here's the key. You're not just trying to send traffic to like an older video that maybe it's not your best. It doesn't deserve being promoted as much. It's like, I mean, you know, you're not just because think about your a new person watching your channel. You want to give them that best first impression. Think about you find somebody that you want to go on a date with. You want to make that first date as special as possible, but you also want to make the second date as special as possible. So think about they're watching whatever new banger video that you put out. What's the second date? What's the next video that they should watch? So what's one of your best older videos that has plateaued or stopped getting views? Then step two, what is a new video idea related? Here's a huge key related to your older video, that would be natural for the viewer to watch next. You don't want to just necessarily take a, a, a hard pivot away from the topic of the video they just watched. The key being that uh, what would be a logical video for them to watch next? So in my video, if you just learned about how to get views and one of those tips is music, but hey, don't make the mistake of using copywritten music or music that's going to get your channel flagged or your video flagged. And if you need help with that, I've got a video on it. And so I've done a couple things there. It is a logical next video to watch. And I've actually woven in reasoning to watch it. And actually, I've woven in some danger if you don't actually heed the information behind door number two of this next video. You could be in trouble and your channel could get flagged. So there's a lot happening in terms of um, stacking the journey of the viewer to naturally want to watch this video next. So here's two strategies for re reviving dead videos. And honestly, if you've already found this video valuable and you're getting some creative ideas, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button and even consider sharing this video with somebody that maybe would want to learn some of this information. So two strategies for reviving dead videos. Strategy one, jump on an industry-related trend and or react to a relevant article in your industry that will be a current revival of what it is you talk about on your channel. Let me give you, let me demonstrate. So Nolan Moult on the Think Media team 
made a new banger video, as we discussed, by discovering an article about how Netflix does their thumbnails and about how Netflix actually reveals the secret to getting more views. They've discovered best practices of what thumbnails on Netflix get the most clicks. And there's some shocking revelations, like how many elements should be in each thumbnail, like what the color scheme should be of the thumbnail, what they've learned from thumbnails that did terrible and didn't send as much traffic to the content on Netflix and others that did better. So Nolan discovered this article that summarized this information. And he also discovered like a Reddit thread and a Twitter conversation. So I'm asking you, the strategy is maybe there's something you can jump on, something trend related, something influential. Netflix is very influential. We're here to help you learn how to do YouTube content. And so learning from Netflix's thumbnail strategy is very relevant to helping you with your thumbnail strategy. And I highly recommend checking out this video. But here's the key. There was an older video that Nolan did all about titles. It was really valuable. It was really great, but it wasn't doing as well as it should. We Like, man, more people need to know about this. And again, you might have that emotion. Man, I've, this is a great video. I want to get this information to people's hands. This is the point of reviving dead videos. This is the point of making new content that strategically points to older content. So at the end of this Netflix video, Nolan says, after you catch someone's attention with the thumbnail, which was the core content taught, revealed from Netflix's strategy, the next thing you need to master is the title. And as you can see in the screenshot, there is a end card. You're going to be using YouTube end cards that pops on screen. That shows up during the last 20 seconds of your video. And Nolan is like, hey, go watch that video now. Now it's crazy is this newer video already has done better. It's done superior and it has more views than this older video. But because of thinking ahead and planning ahead and planning out content, rather than just letting that own, that video do well, but not point anywhere else, how smart and thankful are we at Think Media that there was foresight to weave in a transition at the end of that video to reactivate, to revive an older video in the library. Pretty cool, right? And so what is the next thing they should watch or the next thing they would like or the next video in the series or the next video they should watch? That's what you want to actually weave into your content. This honestly doesn't really work if you do it as an afterthought. Like, oh crap, my video is already shot. It's already done. Hmm, how can I end it? A lot of people put end cards on the end of their videos, but they are not experiencing their maximum potential because they're not weaving a transition into the content itself, into the verbal call to action in the video itself. But Sean, does it work? Well, um, you can see here now that this video was doing decent and it was kind of plateaued, slightly growing, but then there's an inflection point. And what do you think happened there? That is the moment. By the way, at day 80, this video is 80 days old now, that that new video came out and gave a very strategic and integrated call to action using YouTube end cards at the end to this old video about titles. Remember, it was a new video about thumbnails that was taught off a trending article from Netflix, linking to an older video in the library, teaching on titles from a time before. Crazy moment, right? You could see that verifiable result. And here's what we've learned. This has the potential for the video to be truly revived, but also the result is activating the result is activating end screens and multiple other traffic sources driving views to your video. So so this video on titles was being viewed in YouTube search. But notice browse features, 24%, suggested videos, 10, and end screens. So it's getting 10% of its 516 views every two days from the end screen that now gives a call to action to this video. What am I saying? That sometimes, not only will you get views directly from end screens, but it actually truly has the potential to revive the video because now someone, this is deep, Someone who actually never saw that video, 
but they're the person who should see that video, would love that video, and would watch the entire thing, is intrigued by the new piece of content. And when you point them to that other piece of content, they love it. They watch the entire thing. They watch a large portion of it, average view duration. Then YouTube goes, wow, this video is getting some watch time. It's getting some average view duration. And people like this person, like this video. So it activates the other traffic sources. So end screens becomes the best way to start sending some initial traffic. But as demonstrated here, you can now see other traffic sources all being lit on fire. And if you go back to the actual curve, this gr view growth line is not related to just end screen views. End screen views is only 50 every two days. That's 10% of, of, of 516. But it's getting a lot more views than that. So the whole video was being revived because, though, of that moment of activation from a new banger sending traffic to this other video. So the result in act it is that you activate end screens and you activate multiple other traffic sources driving views to the video. Pretty powerful. And you can see here that this very video example performed at a 2% higher click-through rate than the channel average. So what does that mean? It means that if you just use end, end screens, you should. And in general, if you just throw an end screen out and there isn't necessarily like a, a strategic call to action to it, we get like 3.7% of people that see end screens click on them. This one did hundreds of percent better mathematically, like by a factor of almost, almost double better in terms of end screen performance. Why? Because it was so it was woven in so strategically because the new banger video thoughtfully pointed to the other. So this video got a 5.3% click click through rate. This one got, you know, channel average was 3.7. Here's strategy number two. Make a new video about one piece of a larger video. So let's say you've made a longer video that covers a lot of things. You could consider breaking out just a piece of that or talking at Think Media, we say teach a piece, just covering like one piece of that. And that new video can activate and revive the older dead video, right? And so here's the example. I made a video called Cool Tech Under $30. It was about cool office accessories and desk accessories under $50. Now, this new video was a true banger on its own merits. Browse feature, 72% in traffic. You could see that blue line. 224,000 views since the video has come out in the last 55 days. Uh, watch time's crushing, 2,000 new subscribers. New great video. And you might be thinking, well, what if I make a new video and it just doesn't do very well? No big deal. Try again. You could do this as many times as you want. You could do new content that continues to point to an older video in your library that people really need to see or that has strategic use in your business. And so this new video did very well. And this video, though, is only about five items that are under $50 in regards to my entire compared to my entire office setup. At the end of the video, and you can see I'm still on screen here, I'm like, so hey. Those are five cool office accessories under $50. But listen, like if you actually have questions about other things or you're curious about the entire office setup, I did a video about that. So what I did, right, was I made a new video about just one piece of the larger video. Here's what's kind of shocking is there is a lot of strategy. And of course, I hope you learn so much stuff at Think Media and from our content. And, and I hope you've you know seen like our thinkmediasale.com and we have a lot of resources that are going to help you strategically, but in, in addition to quote unquote, doing everything right, YouTube still is kind of a matter. We It's like a matter of odds. It's a matter of, uh, of just how many out at bats, like every 10 videos you throw out, this is kind of even my philosophy. Like if I post 10 videos, I hope three to, to five of them, like have a, a long lifespan and do great. And I'm happy with those odds. Like I'm just committed to posting quality videos. Of course, every time I want to go viral, every time I want things, but it's also just the discipline. It's the discipline of being committed to creating content, committed to being consistent, to committing to trying to make each video better, but never getting, and here's the key, never getting too emotionally tied up with one video. I did it do as good as I thought it, it did. On to the next one. And I can use the next one to point to the one that I really wish people saw, 
right? Always thinking like, man, the more videos you post on YouTube, the higher your chances of having more breakout videos on YouTube. The more videos you post on YouTube that are strategic, the higher your chances of having more videos growing. Why is this so significant? Is because the hero video, the complete office tour, right? The full length video didn't do nearly as good as the video about five office accessories. But what's cool is the, the cool home office desk accessories under $50 links to the full length video. So they are cross promoting each other. Do you see how powerful this is? And so they're, 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 they're promoting each other and then watch. Here's the full length video, which was doing well on its own. Browse features pretty good, 46%. But friend, the end screen is 20% of end screen views. So out of 705 views every two days, that's 141 views driven by end screens from the other video. Crazy, right? And so sometimes even the best quote unquote video in a series of videos you make might not be the most popular. What I mean to say in all of this last rant was like that you don't always know, you can't always, you can't necessarily predict viral. You don't know which video is gonna do better than the other video. So how do you ensure YouTube success? You don't just post one video and pray. You post 10 videos and pray. <laughs> you post 10 videos and then pray and then realize, whoa, three of them did pretty good. Four did all right two kind of did bad, people really need to see those. And then you maybe use the strategy to cross promote all of them strategically using YouTube tools like end cards, um, as we've described. And here's kind of what's cool to check this out in your YouTube analytics is you can go, this is our Think Media Analytics. You could go to engagement and you can actually see on the right side of the screen here, it says top end screens in the last 28 days. And it actually tells you that cool home office accessory uh, video that I was just describing, that is actually driven 4,109 views. That Netflix video, that has driven 3,293 clicks. So 3,293 people clicked to go watch the title video next. So you can actually verify this strategy working in your YouTube analytics. So let me ask you a question. What is a video in your library that you think deserves more views? And if you're not sure about that, I would love to hear from you in the comments. What YouTube questions do you have? Do you enjoy trainings like this? What was your aha moment from this training? Let me know in the comments, what's a YouTube question you have um, that you would like to see covered in the future? Maybe it's about other YouTube features. Uh, please let me know, would love to help. And super pumped. Because uh, today's video, besides winthistech.com, if you have not heard, for a limited time, we're doing a holiday sale at thinkmediasale.com. And so if you love this kind of content and you're serious about growing your YouTube channel in 2022 and you want to geek out on all things, titles, thumbnails, scripts, um, and our 7C system for YouTube success, our holiday sale includes our YouTube Made Simple course, our YouTube Starter Kit, and our YouTube Strategy Workshop, which is a three different things all in one bundle and then discounted over 80%. So if you have not seen this, I want to make sure you just know about this sale so you don't miss out before the price goes up. Thinkmediasale.com. We're running it just through the holidays. Link in the description down below. If you're serious about YouTube, you're going to be blown away. This is 10 times more valuable than the price you're paying and you're going to love the content inside of this, and it's gonna help you go further faster. So thinkmediasale.com and, um, and coffee, it's Coffee with Candle today. So if you've got a question about YouTube, throw up five question marks before and after your question, and um, I'll be back with you for the Q&A. Did you see thinkmediasale.com? For the holidays, we're giving you 80% off our brand new YouTube Made Simple course bundle. Get over $1,900 worth of our best courses, tools, templates, and more. Just go to thinkmediasale.com. Welcome back to Coffee with Cannell. Uh, I'm here for your Q&A. We got questions coming in. And uh, let me know, though, where are you watching from in the world today? A teaspoon miner, it's good to see you. Appreciate the love. 
This is Coffee with Cano, but I'm out here with the Splendrift sparkling water with real squeezed fruit in it. What are you sipping on uh, today? Uh, got to, I'm doing a shoot over at Anderson Studios here in just a bit. Think Media team is coming into Vegas for our annual all team leadership retreat. Super fired up about that. What's happening in your life? My son's 14 months old and he just stuck his little Cheeto finger inside of my Canon R6 mirrorless camera, jacked the shutter thing up and then wiped his finger across the sensor. It's probably destroyed. Parenting, parenthood, fatherhood. What a blessing. And so I uh, packed up that camera yesterday and shipped that into uh, Canon service department. Any parents in the house um, feeling feeling the emotions of uh, of anything like that ha happening? Success is the goal. It's good to see a fourth cup of coffee today. Perry Pictures, always coffee. You know it. Um, watching from Florida, good to see you, Homestead. The UK in the house, thanks for being here. What time is it where you're at? Vancouver Island. Good to see you. My wife and I, you know, we grew up in Seattle and we went to Vancouver Island on a trip once. So we drove up to uh, Vancouver, BC. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, maybe it wasn't Vancouver Island. What's that other island? Lang Lang Langley, something like that, where you go up, you take a ferry backwards towards it. That's a cool spot. Northeast Ohio in the place, Turkey in the house. Good to see you. I see a lot of questions coming in. I want to, oh, I got to shout out the green juice though. I just had some green juice and I had my my uh like my sh my shot um uh jack daniels just kidding you know like like 8 a.m i had my uh ginger shot what do you call them like a mo gin ginger g shot all right listen let's answer some questions in here and uh smash like if you're having a great day i want to get to a question that i saw that was really powerful and here it is. Architectural Sheet Metal 101 asks, how do we use the data from our audience retention graph to make better videos? Well, there's a couple things to consider when it comes to this question and using your audience retention graph. I actually think that before you get to the graph, uh, I like to go to the first 30 seconds. I think what YouTube has shown us most recently is they've shown us that uh, in terms of key moments from audience retention, they are obsessed with the first 30 seconds. One of the ways you should think about your YouTube videos is like a journey. We teach it as the perfect video recipe. It starts with the um, hook. No, it starts with the big idea. Then it goes into the hook. Then it goes to the content. And then it goes to transitioning to another video. And so... When you think about YouTube, you don't want to, th I, I like to think about it in steps. It's like, first, how do I get someone to stop scrolling on, on YouTube with a thumbnail? Second, how do I further pique their interest with the title? Third, if they now love the thumbnail or at least are interested and the title intrigues them, now they've clicked the video. So what do they see in the first second? What do they see in the second second? So it really doesn't matter if I hide a pot of gold at minute seven in the video if they're still not watching after the first 30 seconds. And this is verified by YouTube itself. It says key moments of audience retention, um, above typical intros, these are people that are still watching at 30 seconds. So then you start thinking about what happened in these videos, and so you can study here. What happened during the first 30 seconds of these, of these videos? Um, what was said, what's maybe seen on screen that gripped people's attention? Eight out of 10 people, are still watching this top video during the first 80 seconds. Eight out of 10 people. And then, you know, we could go down to the bottom and see that that five out of 10 people are still watching this uh, video after the first 30 seconds. And we can think about all of those types of things, right? And so ultimately, um, I think about that first, and then I think about the rest of it. And what what uh, YouTube shows us on the right side here, let's hit it from a different side. Let's maybe head over to our top performing videos and study the accessories one. We'll go to cool home office accessories. Um, notice that there is the average, this is typical retention on our channel. So our typical retention on Think Media is the gray, uh, you know, bar, 
gray range, gray range of viewership. So the blue is outperforming that uh, typical retention. It's above typical retention. If the biggest things you can do to study is you say, what happens when it drops? Why did this drop so significantly right here? So you know what's interesting is at this moment, I'm saying, I'm giving a call to action. I'm saying, if you're getting creative ideas, can you hit the like button? And there's some loss. There's either some finger scripting, there's either a little intentional scrolling, or there's a reminder at that moment by asking for the like, audience retention dipped. Um, and so you'd be saying, where? what are the dips? And you'd also be asking, what are actually the higher points? And in some cases, this is because of time codes. You can see that uh, the chapters, people skip to that chapter. So that's why that peaks. But if it's not based on a actual chapter, it could be something cool on camp. This is showing that B-roll matters. This is showing that, um, ooh, command strips. What are those? And I don't know if you're like me, sometimes while the video is playing, you hover over it to see, is there anything juicy coming up? Is there any images? Is there anything beyond this person just being a talking head? And so all of those nuances um, can just help you refine uh, your next video. And, and then it's a trade-off. So I'm thinking about it as we're talking about here, it, here on Coffee with Cano. I'm like, man, is it worth it doing that verbal call to action to get the like? Is it worth it to, um, could we do that in a less invasive way? In fact, you know, I was just talking to Omar about a video and one, I forgot to say, hey, hit the like button earlier on. But then I actually, maybe that's an opportunity because I said, hey, one of the things we should add to this video is the little pop-up graphics that remind people to like. That's less intrusive. It might remind maybe a less percentage of people to like, but it's not going to interrupt their viewing experience. So while you're in the midst of content, you've seen it. This is why you should add editing elements. Boop, boop, boop. You know, it's like, if you're getting value, click like, or like a little, just it says like, and it goes, you know, mouse click, 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 and, and that shows up on screen or subscribe. So all these different things are what we should be kind of constantly evaluating because what gets measured gets improved. And, you know, the sixth R in our seven R framework is review. Like if you're really serious about your YouTube channel, you want to take time to not just post a bunch of content, but, but see what's working, what's not working, and then adapt your strategy accordingly. That was a lot. Um, uh, cheers to, to that. Are you finding this, uh, uh insightful? Um, I hope so. And, uh, thanks for being here today on coffee with Cannell. If you're over on Facebook, I just want to say, I appreciate you. And it would mean the world to me if you, um, hit like on the, on the post and tag somebody in the Facebook comments or just click the Facebook share button because, uh, definitely want to get the word out about, uh, this conversation and anybody that needs help with YouTube should join us while we're, uh, sipping our drinks today together. Um, success is the goal asks when starting a second channel to split out the non niche earlier content after a pivot, are there any issues with reposting the video? So you start a second channel because you want to make sure you niche down and you want to post a video from the first channel on the second channel. Are there any issues? It's not YouTube's favorite thing to post an absolute duplicate video in any case. Because it's on a separate channel, they probably wouldn't notice. Um, in my experience, if I've re-uploaded the same video by accident, I never really wanted to post the exact same video, meaning it's exactly five minutes. It exactly has a certain amount of content. You upload it twice. YouTube often says duplicate and they just reject it. Um, but if you upload it on a second channel, you shouldn't really have an issue. Um, so that is thing one. Thing two is the way we do it is we do remix the content a little bit. Um, we kind of repackage it a little bit. You know, oftentimes what we'll do from a full length coffee with Cano episode like this, if there's a good Q and A question, that clip is cut out. And the minimal amount of remixing, not that you have to take it this far, but it's worth considering. You've made it new. If let's say that original video was a 25 minute live stream and you're like, can I just download it and upload it on my new channel? Well, you could probably trim 40% of that thing, trim out the fluff, jump cut it a little bit, or, or very minimally, because take it back to uploading a duplicate video on your channel. If there's a five minute video, 
you download it or go to your editing software and you make it four minutes and 55 seconds, it's already different. YouTube won't think it's duplicate. It's different. Even if you just cut the end off, cut the thing off, change the deal, cut out that boring part. And that would be kind of worth doing as well. So uh, you should be good to go, but um, take it as an opportunity if you're quote unquote re-uploading it to maybe improve it even slightly and it could do better in its next location. Uh, Foolish Investor, appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, I had a very successful video at 18,000 views versus 4,000 typically, but it was off topic. And since then, my new topic uploads have tanked. Did I mess with the algorithm? Whoo, that's a, uh, that is a good question. And that is the, that is the crazy emotional roller coaster that is YouTube. YouTube plays on our emotions because we can want to go after views, which is not a bad thing to go after. But um, we also, not all views are the same. And if they're the wrong views or they're attracting the wrong audience, they might give us a short-term dopamine hit, hit but long-term, they may not be what's best for our channel. And so, um, okay, that makes sense. You know, Squid Game is what I think you're replying to. Went well. Uh, Squid Game token explained. And I do think that maybe that applies. It, to me, it seems like that could apply to still investing. Um, it looks like you have a couple other videos doing great, though. And then I would just challenge, based on what I'm seeing here, that your new uploads have quote unquote tanked. I think there's a difference between, um, you know, like causation um, and correlation. And that's it's because YouTube messes with our brain. There's really like kind of cool, but very toxic serotonin, dopamine like releases that happen when you crush it on YouTube that lead to peaks that make your brain cloudy. And then you're like emotional the next day. And you're like, what the heck happened? Like I got 13, I got 14,000 views, but like, but now I'm only getting 500, uh, 453. And here's the problem. Like every single one of these videos has different topics. Like maybe people they just don't care about the DocuSign stock. They care more. This was a better title. There's and, and legitimately there's, there's like a hundred factors. The new video topic, the new video title, the time of day, you you take it, you're like, the algorithm's broken. You didn't realize that that was like a holiday for a huge segment of your audience because maybe people of a certain faith watched your channel and that, and you know what I mean? And like, they take that day off and you were like, it's a statement of of my value as a human. You know, like, this is some things I go through, you know what I mean? And so I think it's good that you're observing it all. I think that if it is that Squid Game video, of course, it's going to potentially do disproportionately well, but I but I don't see any problem with it. I think you're overthinking thinking it. Uh, you did not mess with the algorithm. Um, and YouTube does judge each video on its own merits. So sometimes we we I want to encourage you and everybody watching, don't be too afraid that like your next upload has the potential to tank your channel and your career. Like if you have a bad video, what happens is, you know, you get your score last out of 10, it's 10 out of 10, which is not a good thing for anybody that knows YouTube analytics. You want one out of 10, right? It's 10 out of 10. You go, if you see that, here's the truth. One of your videos will always have to be 10 out of 10. Like I guess on the flip side, if they were always one out of 10, it means you'd be on this endless winning streak like eventually you're going to have a 10 out of 10. Like that's okay. It's all right that some of your videos won't do as well. And if they don't do very well, most of your subscribers won't even see them. YouTube will kind of kill it. But your next at bat is your next upload. Great title, great topic, great thumbnail, and go at it again. You did not kill the algorithm. You're all good. I appreciate you. Um, Hey, thanks for keeping the super chats rolling in. I like it. I uh, thank you, foolish investor. So, um, in the it was a video on how much money Mr. Beast made, which I deleted. Okay, well, um, okay, and I get it. And it wasn't maybe investing; it was just makes sense. And and I'm glad you brought this up. Like these are tensions to be managed. I don't think they are black and white answers. They're tensions to be managed. If you have a video that drops on drops jumps on a trend like Mr. Beast, you might attract a lot of an audience. 
you might, but you might attract the wrong audience. Maybe you tra attract, you want to, you want to reach, let's just play out a scenario. You want to reach Gen X and baby boomers who really can invest because eventually even the CPMs and who you talk to and how you help people. I'm not saying that's what your channel is doing, but that is the goal of a channel. Meanwhile, you see that, oh, it's, I can get a lot more views if I talk about Mr. Beast. Okay. So then you have a video and it, what it does is it creates delusion because then you go, oh my gosh, this video did amazing. Well, sure. But the demographic watching it is not the demographic you're ultimately trying to reach. So a lot of times if you are a YouTube entrepreneur and you're coming at it with a business minded approach and really thinking about the legacy and the audience and the vision of the channel you want to build, deleting a video that's doing well could be the most strategic thing you possibly could do. So foolish investor, I'm glad you shared this because this is learning for all of us here at, at Coffee with Candle. Um, but, and, and, and I would say, let's summarize. I think that um, we just talked about this as kind of a new concept at Think Media. Uh, I was talking about with our producer, Tony, about being on brand. Have you ever, have you heard anybody ever say that? Like, is that on brand for us? And I want you to picture a dartboard, okay? So there's a dartboard and and perfectly on brand for your channel would be a bullseye. And on brand, but just barely would be the dart is right on the edge of that dart board. It almost, it almost hit the wall. It almost put a hole in the wall, you know? And if you then think about if it's outside of the entire target, it's off brand. So, you know, five things investors can learn from Mr. Beast might dabble into different audience demos, but could be on brand. Flip side is literally just how much, you know, Mr. Beast made, which lots of channels do just YouTuber kind of about YouTubers, about famous YouTuber videos, which is a pretty powerful niche. Um, but you're like, it's off brand. Then you make that hard decision as you did to delete the video or to, to, for some of us watching to not create the video. I want to pass the question off to you, coffee with Cannell. Have you, is there videos on your channel that are off brand? Have you been confused about your brand where you're like, and I think what I said with Tony was like, yeah, we should make this video. But it's right on the fringe. Like it's on brand for us, but like we should not get distracted. Those should not be our next 10 videos. Once a year, we should maybe make that video. It fits in the think media world, but like just barely, let's try to stay as close to bullseye because the closer you stay to the core promise, the core vision, the core viewer, the the core promise um, that your channel has made, then really the better for it because your uh People expect something from you. You've made a promise to people and you're delivering on that promise and you're building up a clear focused audience of people interested in that particular type of content. Smash like if you're having fun and getting value today. Uh, good to see you, Dr. Andrea. Really appreciate you. And uh, it's been awesome to see how much success you're having on YouTube and so grateful you're a part of uh, VRA. Uh, Laura, good to see you. Um, and let's see here. Foolish Investor, yeah. I decided to kill it off ASAP because it wasn't growing as fast. Great idea though for anyone in that niche. Love it. Appreciate it. Um, have you entered winthistech.com as we get ready for our next question? There is, let me show you some cool things, friends. We are giving away a complete YouTube studio. It is open internationally. Winthistech.com, link in the description down below if you haven't entered. When you go there, what you're going to see is there's multiple ways to enter. So you log in with your email or like Facebook connect or Twitter or whatever. And then there's different things you can do. You can get daily bonus entries. You can jump on our text message list. And all these things are to add value. Like I realize, you know, this is helping us grow some of our social medias, but I really want to invite you to be a, a part of those things. We're dropping info and extra resources on Twitter uh, over on my Instagram at Sean Cannell, you know, I'm sharing YouTube tips. You'll get a little behind the scenes. Um, you know, I share my vision, my values, a lot of cool stuff. It'd be a great place to connect active in my DMS, active in my comments. So anyways, that's the, uh, it's at windistech.com. And then on this page, you can also just see a little bit about the, uh, 
the think team and some of the stuff that we're up to, but definitely enter the giveaway. There's 12 days left at the time of being live on this coffee with Cannell. You've got 12 days and then the winner will be announced. We're going to announce the winner on our main channel on Think Media. Um, Heather's going to go live, announce the winner. It's selected randomly. We use a software. It's all legit. It's all transparent. It's called Gleam.io. And so uh, it's super fair. So win this tech.com. Friendly Pharmacy, thanks for being here today. I started my channel by accident during uh, co dot vid. Uh, and now I'm trying to transition the audience. It's challenging. Why are you? Okay. So you're, you're just trying to pivot brands, trying to pivot um, audiences. Yep. It, it can be, it could be hard. Just go for it though. Just, just go for it. The get super clear about your vision, super clear about what you want, where you want to go and then go for it. A lot of self-doubt crap creeps in. Um, but some people are like, you know, man, what I'm really passionate about is like, Airbnbs and house hacking, but I have this, you know, I already have some momentum talking about, um, DIY stuff. It's like, but if you know this, but are you certain that you're like in love and that you really want to go deep on Airbnbs and house hacking? Yeah, I am certain. Then just go like one of the best ways to, to, uh, pivot and create momentum. Literally like momentum is like a train. If it's going one way, you have a little bit of momentum on your current channel niche. The only way to get it going the other direction is not like, well, let me just kind of lightly hit the brakes. It's like slam the brakes. Chug, 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 Start getting the other way. It's going to be hard, but exert exert as much energy as you can to start getting the train going the other direction. You got people in the furnace shoveling coal in the engine room. You got the snow piercer engine eternal trying to get the train trying to go the other direction anybody get the snow piercer reference like and, and just go for it like if you're clear and convicted that you should be going in this direction and that this is what your future is and this is what you want to be known for and this is what your brand is the future's forward it's time to go well when i get any negative comments because somebody was like oh i liked it better when you were but you know that sorry susan like i appreciate you but like i know i'm supposed to go this new direction your life cannot be fully based around serving susan you know, that's one person you care about Susan. You love Susan, but you know, you're going towards Airbnb and DIY. So you got to go, Susan, you're either on the train or not. Cause I'm going snow Pusher has left the station. Okay. I don't, I don't know why I got so triggered. Like, are we just, uh, I, I, that was crazy. Um, okay. Tutorials mag. When can you say that your channel is working or not? Is it when you reach 30 to 40 videos and you don't see much, too much traction? So I'm going to answer this question by pointing you to a Think Media podcast episode. We'll drop it in the comments and uh, we'll make sure it's in the YouTube description if you're catching this on the replay. The episode is called How to Know When to Quit. So it's, it's, it's a longer conversation. You can see this is a 37-minute conversation because I'm going to give you frameworks it's not a black or white answer. Sometimes you need to quit. Sometimes you need to stick. Sometimes you need to pivot. And I believe by the end of that Think Media podcast episode, you'll have clarity. Check it out. If you want to rebrand your channel, is it better to delete all the other videos and leave old ones um, or add new videos? It is probably good to make the videos unlisted um, I don't like deleting videos. You can make them private because maybe someday you want to like show your kids how funny your old videos were. That's kind of my take. Um, the key with the videos is if they are still causing growth, they could be causing the wrong growth. So if you go over to my channel, Think Media, these first few videos are not... They're, they're actually not off-brand, but there's definitely some off-brand videos on here. There's some like weird interviews and like some different things that I did. But here's the key. This stuff is getting none if like one view. This, this, this stuff is getting no views unless they're nostalgic views. Like people are like, I wonder, I want to go like spy on Sean's older videos. Um, and so they're not being recommended. They're not being suggested. They're not being 
So I do not see them as a vulnerability. And I personally has left them up because I think they show the journey. And I think that one of the most powerful things for you and for me is our story, is our progression. You know, people can't relate to your success unless they've seen your struggle. This is not just I snapped my fingers and all of a sudden there was a gold play button beyond my shoulder. Um, this was grind, pain, emotions, frustration, fatigue. It's been uh, it's been 10 years since I started Think Media. It's been 11 years since I started Think Media. So anyways, I like showing the journey. However, if I had like some fringe garden video, you know, where I was like, you might not have known that I'm really into tulips, but like, here's how I've made my tulips so colorful, you know? And all of a sudden that video is like still going viral. And, and a lot of times that'll happen to us. Like, friend, do you have a video in your library if you're watching this that you're like, yeah, it just keeps getting views. It's like that one time we went to Disneyland and we like showed off that ride. My channel is about cars, but like I went on that family trip. That video can be a vulnerability to you because it's attracting the wrong subscribers and people are constantly subscribing for like Disneyland tours when you're trying to talk about renovating Jeep engines and you got all these, you know, you have the wrong audience subscribing, it is harming your growth. And so um, I don't think you necessarily need to delete the videos, consider making them unlisted or private if they're still growing your channel. And then I'd even say more than that, there is some wisdom to brand, like an actual brand experience. Like I got a lot of videos on my shelf. I do think producer Tony, we could potentially, you know, they're, they're, I, I, I'm I so attached. Maybe you are too. I'm emotionally attached to every good video, every bad video. It's like, I love them all. Give me all the videos. You know, like it's just, they're all part of the story. Like I, that little, oh, that one was kind of, well, that one's a little rough around the edges. That one, it has a little more character. It's cute because of how, ugly it is, you know? And so like, you got all these different videos in your library, but I do think there's something about leading with the best of the best. Final tip I'll give practically is consider optimizing your homepage. You know, a lot of people aren't going to actually explore your entire li library. They're going to explore your homepage. You know, our director of our video ranking Academy program is, uh, like literally at the highest level of executing the think media methodology how we think about architecting videos, implementing our 7R system, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, he, in the future, well, I wanted to teach on this in depth. Um, and I think Nolan might be teaching on it as well. But eventually, how you organize your homepage into different categories, into different playlists, I think also speaks to um, the, more, the most forefront-facing brand. Almost nobody is seeing my really old videos. What they're seeing is what's being recommended to them. And what they're seeing is like, oh, I'm here now. Let me go to your homepage, AKA your webpage. Your YouTube channel homepage is basically your YouTube website. Is your website optimized? What is the viewer experience on your YouTube website? Does your, is it clear? Is it fun? Is it accurate? Does it represent your brand, your brand values, and how you help people the most? Think about evolving your YouTube channel page. Six Shop, Super Chat, I appreciate it. Thank you. How do you decide what to make videos about just focused on shorts now? Well, that's a great question. Um, the creator who understands the viewer best wins. So... Asking just what to make videos about in isolation is maybe not the fully best question. The best question is who am I making videos for? To the degree you understand who you're making videos for becomes a domino that kicks over the question of what video should I make next? What video would be best or get the most views or perform the best when I know who I'm making videos for? And so this is why we ask you to define who is your YouTube channel for and what problem does it solve? And even if you're just making shorts, you're like, well, it's not like an education channel. Well, it's entertainment. So what is, if you understand that I'm really trying to reach Gen Z or Gen Alpha, is Gen Alpha even watching content? Sean Bradley, my son, um, he is. He, he's, he, he can grab my phone and like, edit a video on iMovie. It's like, it's like crazy how into it. He's 14 months old and he's like swept, swept, 
you know, grabs it, like unlocks it or actually enters the password so many times that it's like, it's going to take five minutes to tell your phone. Anyways, um, what is the psychology language communication style humor of the person you're trying to reach? That's going to inform the content you want to create. I would say that, um, if you also want an accelerant for getting results with that, definitely check out thinkmediasale.com. You know, we have, uh, our YouTube starter kit included in the sale and there's some super cool stuff inside of that. Um, including you could see there's the YouTube made simple course, our YouTube starter kit, our YouTube strategy workshop. And inside of the starter kit, we have the YouTube clarity blueprint. Everything I just said, you might've said like, I don't really know who it's for. I don't know what my brand is. I don't know what my strategy is. I don't know what videos to make. I'm not, I need to put all the pieces together. I'm not sure how to do YouTube right. How can I identify my own strengths? All of the above. You're going to learn that step-by-step step in this printable PDF workbook. Plus we have title formulas. So you don't have to like become an expert at writing titles. You get to just cop copy off our cheat sheet for writing YouTube titles that are going to get clicks. We've got our 51 video ideas to jumpstart your channel. And we've got our 51 money-making video ideas. If you specifically are looking for the shortest path to earning revenue. And so Think Media Sale, in fact, here, check this video out. Here's the details. Did you see thinkmediasale.com? For the holidays, we're giving you 80% off our brand new YouTube Made Simple course bundle. Get over $1,900 worth of our best courses, tools, templates, and more. Just go to thinkmediasale.com. Yeah, thinkmediasale.com, check it out. Um, we're going to land the plane in just a second here, but uh, Daisy, did I get those super chats? Did I already answer them? Um, and if I didn't, they're no longer up. And so um, post them in private chat if any um, are still to cover because I want to make sure to honor those. Um, we're not doing channel reviews today, but we will do it again in the future. We did it a while back. Super fun with Tony and Heather and Omar. Um, and uh, let me know if you were a part of that. Here's the details on screen, thinkmediasale.com, 80% um, off at thinkmediasale.com. Um, and smash like if you've been getting value today. Here we go. Super chat from Maya. Appreciate it. Can videos go viral months after being published? Great question. The answer is, uh, is yes, absolutely. So I'll just contextualize and, and land the plane on a couple of things. One, uh, Tony, the producer, has a faceless channel. I don't have a lot of time to unpack what that is, but he has a video that was hundreds of days old. Maybe you'll tell me in the chat. Um, literally hundreds of days old that was going from flatline to just boom. It just started going viral. And what we've also... Uh, recently, I went to a conference called Vid Summit and learned from a YouTube employee. Um, Tony said it was 504 days old and it did 150,000 views in three days. Um, and so, uh, and so, yes, the YouTube employee told us don't overly judge your your video by the first day, first week, or even first month. We have seen um, a lot of videos that think media start taking off at day 200, day 345, day 463. It's insane. I think that that's a mindset that doesn't get talked enough about. And that's also something that is deeply entrenched in our think media methodology. While a lot of people are focusing on short-term viral, we are focusing on long-term sustainable. We are focusing on videos that over the long haul get disproportionate views and um, it's a it's a legacy based lifestyle based strategy that um, can be in incredibly uh, incredibly helpful. And and let me actually show you in this. First of all, this video did disproportionately well. Naturally, it's pretty cool. It's generated twenty two thousand dollars, two point two million views, and you can see this blue line of how well it's doing. But it's as cool as that is. Let's look at down here on what 
what uh, happens on Think Media and what YouTube calls our quote unquote typical performance. So because of our, and this is not every channel, every channel does not benefit from this. Short-term based channels, viral based channels, trend based channels, topic based channels versus search based channels, evergreen channels, shelf life content, content that has wide appeal or, or rather long-term appeal. I am going to quote and show you on the screen in my analytics what the average performance across all of the videos we post on Think Media is over the long haul. Here's what it is. The typical performance one year and 351 days into a video posted on Think Media. This is over two years now. One year and 360 days is minimum 35,000 views. So if anyone's like, why did your video only get 3,000 views? I'm like, just give it two years, dog. It's going to get 35,000. I prom I, I can promise you. I guarantee it'll get 35,000 in two years. The range, though, is 162,000 views. So I, I could almost I could sit here and say, yeah, I mean, every one of our videos gets like basically 100,000 views approximately. No, it doesn't. It only has 4,000 views right now. Bro, what's going like? Do you need, will your parents mean to you? Like, do you need, do you need a hug? Like, it's going to be all right, dog. Like, no, just chill. Like, I know it looks like that now, but you got to see a little bit further down the road. Like, give this thing two years. You, you're judging the game wrong. You don't know how the game is played. But take a deep breath and maybe really see what's happening in this YouTube thing. So this is, of course, the methodology we're doing, which we would be want to be convicted on and believe in. But the powerful thing about this is that when you approach YouTube this way, think about it. You post the video today, but it's still getting views for weeks, months, and years to come. And two years later, it's continuing to grow. Those, It's, it's somewhat plateaued, but you can see that there's a slight expansion. See how typical grows? Watch that. See the typical. So there's a big number. You see that big black number. It's hard to see the small one. Typical in this period is 23,000. Then by day 40, 480, uh, 448. But I'll land the plane saying, you asked, do videos go viral? And this is a good example. Notice this one. This video did well for the first 122 days. And then boom, it actually had a whole run at day 122. So um, things to consider. All right. One other super chat. Uh, right under Robert teaches English. How can I niche down? As an ESL teacher, I feel like I'm creating so much. So um, I don't think you need to niche down. I mean, maybe the question is how to stand out. And I understand that maybe, let me look at your, I know a couple people who have that language channels. One of the ways they do things is they, they just crush it. They do like one video, one word. Maybe you're doing that. In fact, let me actually see how many videos you're posting. Um, 15 videos uploaded. That is a lot. Okay. So every other day, 15,000 views. It's cool. You got a spike here. Was that a short? We'll see. That was a good spike of views. Uh, maybe there's a good short a year ago. Um, I think, you know, one, one thing that you've probably seen other channels do I, is like one video, one word. And that it might make life easier and also harder. You're like, I'm creating so much. What do I do? I, I don't know. You get more hooks in the ocean. And, and what I mean by that is a lot of ESL channels, right? People want to pronounce one particular hard word. And sometimes these videos, that YouTube shorts actually. So if I'm you, as this strategy is coming to me, is this what I'm doing right now? Is I'm actually going YouTube shorts and or still vertical videos that are just one word, one answer. Um, and instead of making a four minute video or a 10 minute video, I'm going to make 20 videos, pre-schedule them um, potentially, and uh, just let them roll out. So you said, I want to create less. Well, I might create more, but I might create it in a more intelligent way or rather a way that buys my time back, gives me more time and more margin. But I think what will also happen is there will be more wind in your sales when money's coming in when growth is happening and you're in a competitive niche. So don't, don't be surprised 
at the how hard this is because it is hard. So I think there's something about persistence, grit, and then success leaves clues. I'm sure you've studied studied ESL channels. The charge of the day coffee with Cannell is market research, not comparison because comparison is the thief of joy. Not I'm going to go look at other channels and and have that talk me into um, sucking or, you know, who am I? My friend John Acuff says, don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. Don't compare your brand new YouTube channel to somebody else. Oh, they're so much better than me. They've been doing it for 10 years, dude. Give yourself a break and, and, and check out some other channels, but here's your charge. December, um, market research. Like there's something to be learned from the channels that are experiencing growth from the channels that are getting views from breakout videos, from using tools like vidIQ trending tab. So if I, you know, ESL channel, this is a way to look, you, you should know, and you should know who are the five to 10 channels killing it in your industry that you can learn from. Um, is ESL, is this a language channel or is this Counter-Strike? That's an actual game. That's not right. Uh, it's probably this top video, six, okay, advanced learning channels. Speak with Vanessa. Okay, great. So if I find her, watch this one quick tip. Shout out to our friends at vidIQ. You go to this trending tab and this shows you the videos with velocity on her channel, even if they're 20 days old or three months old or two years old. So then it's, oh, a 1.5 hour real English conversation. Oh, that's a cool idea. I could do that. It's two years old. It's still getting 158 views an hour. And I don't, I don't need to go deeper. I don't got time to go deeper. I got to go to Anderson Studios. Like, one idea, boom, good tool, good execution of the tool. What 60 seconds of market research. I'm not saying that video is going to change your life, but it could. And that is the way you could start seeing something like, oh, that's cool. Let me experiment with that. Oh, that's cool. Let me get out of my box. Oh, that's cool. Let me actually take a second to look at what's happening in the market. Look at what's happening on YouTube. Study and not compare and not have it lead me to discouragement. Have it lead me to inspiration. Have, he lead, have it lead me to a couple creative ideas that I can implement so I can set up and build momentum going into 2022. If you've been getting value today, smash like on the video. And I do want to, uh, you know, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kate, Cat Slade for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, check out links in the description down below. And if you, like me, uh, want to take the holidays to level up and learn, I've spent $5,000 that's not how much our holiday bundle is, but on learning. I just got uh, an advanced business strategy course uh, on sale. It was $1,000 for my pen, my friend Patrick Bet David. And so I printed out the workbook. Um, I uh, have purchased about six online courses. Um, well, some of them are bundles. And so I'm, I, and I've already been learning. And, and here's the other thing. I've been investing in myself and actually doing the work. I've got Google Docs open. I'm taking the notes. I'm screenshotting slides. I'm making my game plan. I'm putting notes in my binder, uh, my note, my journal about, okay, here's what I'm learning. Here's how, how I'm going to apply it. Here's the sequence of how I'm going to apply it. I really want to invite you to, if you're serious about YouTube in 2022, to not miss the YouTube Made Simple sale, but to actually go through it. Like, of course, well, Sean, do you just want to sell me a course? Well, kind of, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm not, like, obviously I want to sell the course. Like people are like, get so weird about it, but it's because it'll actually add value to your life. If you are serious about growing on YouTube, I practice what I preach. I invest in myself, print out the workbook, block the time on your schedule, put some actual concentrated learning time. Don't just swipe on Twitter spaces and join random rooms of rooms about nothing and, and just turn off Netflix, turn off Hulu, get into a learning mode, get into a battle station mode, get into a mode where you really think about putting your game plan together for 2022, get into a mode where you really think about, I'm going to start taking my YouTube channel seriously. I'm going to really learn, really strategize, really take advantage of these resources. And here's the thing, the Think Media team and I work so hard to put this course together at 80% off to at the for the price of a pair of Yeezys, you can actually like get into an, a course that'll change your life if you're serious. And it's not for everybody. And if it's not right for you, I don't I don't want you to have this. But if you are on the fence and you have been hearing about the our Think Media sale, like take advantage of this thing. Like you are going to be blown away. And the cool thing, 
is that there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So even if you're like, I'm not sure if I'm going to get value, no, no sweat, like literally test it out. But with the YouTube clarity blueprint alone, try like I stand by this. When you take this course and you enroll in it and you print out or just download the PDF and open up your Evernote and your iPad and your fire tablet, and you start going through the clarity B blueprint, you are going to feel this alone was worth the value just to get just the printable workbook and to go through this and the margin, the time that was worth the value, but there's so much more in there in terms of the main YouTube simple course, the, uh, the title 15 title formulas, 21 video ideas. So anyways, just want you to know about it because I don't want you to miss out on the sale. And eventually the price will go up for this and the bundle will go away. We're including the YouTube starter kit. So YouTube made what is even the url exhausted at the end of coffee with candle think sale.com is the url definitely check that out uh and thanks again for uh being here on coffee with candle today i appreciate you smash like if you got value and uh, i look forward to seeing you in the next episode peace did you see think sale.com for the holidays, we're giving you 80% off our brand new YouTube Made Simple course bundle. Get over $1,900 worth of our best courses, tools, templates, and more. Just go 